Hello, welcome to Center St. Sister. On Center St. Sister, we might laugh or cry, we might get angry or motivated, we might grieve or celebrate, and sometimes all of those things can happen in the very same episode. We are a community of spiritual searchers who embrace Jesus' example of making a beeline to the hurting. Whether an episode is spiritual in nature, purely educational, or just for fun, my hope is that you finish the episode feeling hopeful. I hope you hear something today that lets you know you are loved and helps you love one another. Welcome to Center Saint Sister. I was six years old when the Summer Olympics were in LA, and Mary Loretton had put on quite a show. She won a gold medal in the individual all-around competition, as well as two silver medals and two bronze medals. Her performance made her one of the most popular athletes in the United States and certainly in our home because I was obsessed. I spent the rest of the summer trying out our couch as my apparatus. The back of it made a great balance beam. The springs gave just enough bounce for a front flip, and I could catapult myself right over the arm of it like a vault. I soaked up every feature story there was about Mary Loretton. I made my parents read and reread every article that came out. We VHSed news programs that came on, and I knew most everything there was to know about her. I knew that she was born in 1968 in West Virginia. I knew about her injuries. I knew about her rivalries. I knew that she was the first woman on the Wheaties box and the first national spokeswoman for the company. I studied Mary Loretton. One day, when I was in my 20s, I was back in my hometown of Houston visiting a megachurch with a friend. They were putting on a play for Christmas. I was in the bathroom of the megachurch, washing my hands, when I looked at myself in the mirror, and I noticed, in the mirror, to my right, Mary Lou Retton. Somehow, 20 years later, she still had the exact same haircut. I was positive it was her. And when I saw her, I gasped. It was like this. Washing my hands getting the soap, washing my hands again, and, (gasps) well, when she heard my gasp, she was worried about me. Instead of looking at me, though, she engaged with me through the mirror, and she turned right to me and asked, are you okay? Now, the pressure was on. Because all of this sudden attention, it made me feel conflicted. Should I make up an ailment? Should I make up a dilemma? Should I make up a reason for my gasp? Should I pretend to have no idea what she was talking about? When she asked me if I was okay, should I say, yeah? Are you? Should I produce some fake sneeze and make her think that my gasp was just somehow part of it? I didn't know. My brain, it was working quickly. And I was violently flipping through a Rolodex of scenarios, a million scenarios, all scenarios, except the one which was true, which was that she was my childhood idol. And seeing her surprised me. What was wrong with that? I don't know. Eventually, what came out was just a simple statement. You are Mary Lou Retton. And she smiled and said, yes, I am. And then it was quiet for a beat too long. And I said, thank you. And I reached out my wet hand. Her hand was wet too. So it was the most awkward handshake ever. And that was it. I knew who Mary Lou Retton was. I could point her out. I knew the facts of her life. I admired her. We had even had an encounter. But that evening in the bathroom, she had no idea who I was. And she had no reason to. Jesus. He says some really hard things. He wasn't a mincer of words, and he absolutely did not pander. He was bold. He said hard things. And I think that one of the hardest of them all was from the book of Luke. Jesus was traveling through the towns and villages, and he was teaching as he was making his way to Jerusalem. And he said these words. He said these words to the people following. He said, make every effort to enter through the narrow door because many will stand outside knocking and pleading, sir, open the door for us. But he will answer, I never knew you and I don't know where you come from. I never knew you. I never knew you. Ouch. I don't know about you, but I would so much rather be berated by Jesus. Hey, Allison, slow drivers in the fast lane. People who post vaguely on Facebook, Little League umpires, yeah, you really made a mess of all of that. But I never knew you. I can't bear it. I think it's important to look at first who Jesus is talking to in this moment because he was speaking to a crowd made up of mostly Jews, religious Jews. They believed in the one true God. He wasn't speaking to agnostics or polytheists. They were Hebrew-reading, scripture-knowing, law-abiding Jews 
who probably thought that because of all that, they had life figured out. So in these words, Jesus, he wasn't addressing some pagan audience. He was talking to the church crowd, most of whom assumed that they would go to heaven because they were good Jews. And he gives this church crowd this parable to urge them into something more than just recognition. And he makes it sound really important. You know, an enemy doesn't care if we know everything there is to know about Jesus, when and where he was born, his injuries, his rivalries. He knows all that too. A little fleeting interest, some memorized stats, a weird handshake once. Listen, that makes us fans, not disciples. And I'm afraid that it doesn't make Jesus any more of a savior than it would Mary Lou Retton. So what is discipleship? How do we avoid ever hearing the words, I never knew you? During motherhood, it's true that you spend a pretty significant chunk of a decade with kids glued to you. During one stretch of infancy, I remember referring to them as the cutest little barnacles that I ever did see. I'm only just on my way out of this phase, so I don't miss it yet. But for years, I bathed with farm animals and dinosaurs and limbless Barbies floating around me. Looked like something went horribly wrong. I once had a root canal and I had this disturbing thought that it was kind of nice because it felt like some me time. The point is, as a mother, you spend a lot of time with your kids, so much so that they mimic everything you do. They stirred a pot the same way I did. They held a phone the same way I did. They talked like me. And sometimes that was awesome like when they would comfort the baby who was sad using my exact words. And sometimes that was terrible, like when they told off a fellow customer in Target. True story. A lady cut in front of us in line because she didn't see us. And my daughter, she was tiny. She put one hand on her hip. She threw the other one out in front of her. And she said in disbelief, what the heck? Except she did not say heck. And I was horrified. I'd never left Target empty-handed, but I did that day. When you're a disciple. You are under the formation of someone, side by side, day by day. You walk like them. You talk like them. You become to think the way they might think, feel the way they might feel. Of course, yes, first, there has to be an encounter, but it cannot stop there. It can't stop at fan following or even an awkward handshake. Discipleship, but it's so much different. It's more than just some to-do list. It's more than some checkpoints. It's more than a not-to-do list or some rejections. Discipleship is so much more than a formula. Because formulas, they miss an important point. Our spiritualities were not designed to help us nail a to-do list. And formulas are often designed to just make our lives better. But our spiritualities, our discipleship, it's designed to bring us into union with God, not just make our lives better. Our Catholic Christianity, it's not primarily about how to make our lives better. And it's not that it doesn't do that. It's just not what it's about. Our Catholic Christianity, it's about a trinity and an incarnation and a resurrection and how we connect our lives to our God through the sacraments. Being a disciple, it's about organizing ourselves around the life and ministry of Jesus Christ, so much so that we talk the way he talks and think the way he thinks and feel the way he feels. And if we abide by some list that we've just created, and if we're honest about our expectations of fulfilling that list, I would venture that nine times out of 10, I think we'll find that what we really want is control, not communion. We can read about someone, but do we know them? Because shaking someone's hand is so much different than being with them, than imitating them, than predicting their next move because we've studied them so intently. How would it change our days if we spent our whole day with Jesus, apprenticing, a barnacle, one might say? How would it change how we study, how we date, how we drive? Jesus matters as I interact with my barista, my next door neighbor. Jesus matters how I stand in line and target. Jesus shows us how to live because God could have sent him to us a million different ways. And Jesus could have died as an infant during Passover and we would have still been redeemed. But God wanted us to see this, how he loved, how he forgave, how he healed, how he didn't back down, and how he laid himself down. Jesus talked to people he wasn't supposed to talk to. He touched people he wasn't supposed to touch. He ate with people he wasn't supposed to eat with. He went to people's houses he should have been repulsed by. He worked when he wasn't supposed to work. He broke the rules, but he fulfilled the law. 
And all the while, important people were asking, who do you think you are that you can forgive sins? Jesus asked difficult and confounding questions to people who knew that they had everything neatly figured out. He welcomed the people that we would reject, and he befriended those we would exclude. He hired those we would fire. The selfish, the lonely, the partiers, the misbehaved, the cheaters, the oppressed, the judged, the promiscuous, the homeless, the ones caught up in bad choice after bad choice, the ones with broken hearts. It was their house he wanted to visit. It was them he called down from the tree. They are who he met at the well for them he drew in the sand. He encouraged people to debate and to discuss. He didn't punish the people that deserved to be punished. He sent them on their way with gentle rebukes and endless compassion. He picked a ragtag group of boys and men to be in his inner circle, and he infuriated the righteous. And if we are not studying the Gospels, There's no way to know who Jesus is. There's no way to know what he said or what made him really, really mad or what made him cry if we're not discipling. When Jesus gave us those warning words, I never knew you, he was talking to a group of people who were missing out on discipleship. He was talking to people who had it backwards. They were doing good things, thinking that those good things made them acceptable. And what Jesus was telling them is that I make you acceptable. Now, come follow me be my disciple. Watch what we can do together. In this episode, it features my new friend, Ritha. She's a wife, a mom, a life coach, and a beautiful disciple. You're going to love this fun conversation. Hello, Ritha. I am so excited for you to be a part of Center Saint Sister. I feel, um, really enthusiastic about this interview because one of the reasons that I started a podcast in the very first place was because I was having these beautiful, thick, meaningful, inspiring conversations um, with the women around me. And I would listen and I would think to myself, I am so very blessed. And simultaneously, as a woman in ministry, I'm sure that you can relate, I was also hearing how incredibly lonely people were. You know, people were desperate for connection. And so here I was having these really beautiful conversations. And here I was at work hearing how people were longing for this type of thing. And all of a sudden, it felt urgent. It felt urgent to share this thing that I was experiencing because I was realizing that I was in a place of of privilege to have it. You know, there was something about my the moment in in my life and in my health and my everything that allowed me to have these conversations. And all of a sudden it felt like my civic duty to just share the goodness. And so, Retha, all that to say, I am so excited to share you. As I have been following along on your social media, you are so inspiring. You're so motivating. Um, It is A huge pleasure of mine to have you here and introduce you to people. Welcome to Center Saint Sister. Thank you so much for being here. Listen, that was like such a great introduction because (laughs) it wasn't about me, right? And and so some people are gonna go, huh? What does she mean? I think it's so good because it's truly about why you're doing this, why we're gonna talk today. And what y'all need to know is behind the scenes is we have already had two or three of those deep conversations, not even knowing each other at all. Like you listen, you know, when you meet someone good and you're talking to them over text about this, like we met to be on this podcast, I asked her, could I be on her show? And then we go from sure to I want to take a walk. Let's do, yes. have you felt this? I mean, it's just, yes. it's amazing. So I think that that's, that was the best introduction because it makes it not about the person, but about the why, why we're here, why well, this and is- the connection. I mean, you yeah. and I formed a quick connection and that's a beauty of age and maturity. I think is that you can m- more quickly discern, you know, the, the things that you're looking for and the things that you enjoy. And so you and I developed a quick connection. And as I'm, you know, looking at the things that are important to you, I'm saying, Hey, these things are important to me too. Right. And, and I know that this is going to be a place of quick connection for listeners as well. So I yeah, just, so that- that's what I'm I mean. So like, enthusiastic. You could, you could hear about me. She could read my bio, but it was great to just jump right in and talk about 
women, why we're here, what we love. And then if you love everything I say, you're going to follow me anyway. You're going to find me anyway. You're going to know what I do. But I, I, I want to speak to something you said. You said that women are so lonely. That is amazing to yeah. me. And I'm not going to blame it because look, social media will always be kind of a walk the line of a love hate for many people. Sure. But I think the loneliness I attribute it to social. Social Mm. makes people have fake relationships. Now, Mm -hmm. stay with me. Here's what I mean. Mm -hmm. When I say fake relationships, I don't mean that the relationships aren't meaningful because they are, right? You're friends with Kelly and you know everything about her, but social has made y'all have a fake connection because you don't call her as much and you don't check in as much and y'all haven't had lunch in a long time. Mm. Why? Because you look on social and you see that Jeff is in a baseball tournament this weekend. So you believe she doesn't have time and you Mm. see that she's doing all of these things. So you think that she's busy. And so because of that, you still feel like you're connected to her life because you see all of that, but you're not connected to her. Cause if you did, you would know that she would have loved for you to come and have coffee. She would have loved for you to stop by the ball field and sit with her with um, some tea for a minute, right? Because you were right down the street and you thought, oh, I should call her. Oh, she's watching the game. Listen, if you have kids, you know, we're half watching that game. I mean, it's not really that important to us. We are doing a million other things. We would wish you would stop by. (laughs) Maybe even praying they lose so we can go home. Maybe. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> yes, if you only knew. And so that's why I call it a fake friendship or fake connection is because I think social media has made us miss yeah. that. We're not as busy as it looks. I, I know that this is true. I have people all of the time, if we do finally have that conversation that we're longing for, that has come up several times. Well, oh, you're so busy. You know, I wouldn't want to. And I'm like, I'm really not. I'm definitely not as as busy as it seems. I think that is such an excellent point. By the way, I had um I hadn't had a speaking engagement of this magnitude for a long time like I did um this last weekend. Oh, but yeah. there were um like 350 women in the room and I am telling you, Rita, there was such a spirit of eagerness that I have not felt in a really long time. We are desperate to get going again with, um, I, I think that we have been able to put our finger squarely on what's been missing. And it is that need and neediness. It is that in person and people there were so eager to, to be together and it was completely lovely. Yeah. I think you're onto something great. I think, you know, so pro tip everyone is if you think of them, reach out. Yeah. Don't think anything else. Just do it. Right. Just take the holy, like, obey the holy nudge. Yeah. And it's so easy to do. It's so easy. Um, Okay. So before we get going, I have one thing that you and I kind of settled on to do. I I feel like there was such a wide range of things that you and I have already discussed and could discuss that it was like, I kind of want to take time. And then you were open to it, which was great. I mean, we could have gone a million different directions. Um, But it's just like introducing you well, and then maybe being able to cover a whole variety of topics like we had in our voice texts back and forth. So I wanted to ask you just a couple of, not a couple, but several meaningful questions that allowed you to take them wherever you would like as, as a Love way of it. introducing yourself. But before we do that, can you catch us up with who Aretha is? You know, your, your family, your stage of life, your work, what are you doing right now? Who and what do you love? If you could just introduce yourself first. A moment, and then I will try to ask some revealing questions. Okay, so uh, my name is Rita Nicole, and I am a mom of three boys. I always thought I would just be able to get a girl; it just did not happen. <laughs> and so here I am with all these boys, and I love it actually. Like mm-hmm. if you've ever thought God knows what you need, like if you're like me and you're crying in the ultrasound room, like I wanted a girl. <sighs> uh, yeah. Fast forward 19 years later and you, you, you were right, God, which he's like, duh. Um, <laughs> so I am a um, mom of three boys. Uh, I am a wife to uh, the mister is what I call him on the internet. The and, um, and I'm a coach by day, every day. Um, mm-hmm. I have two other companies that I run, um, but every day I am a coach, a life coach and a business coach. And I am a life coach because I realized 
in helping so many people with their business that if something in their life is wrong, if their life is a mess, it affects their business. And if something in their business is wrong, it can affect their life. And so I wanted to be able to help the whole person. And so that is what I do every day. My jam is women. Mm -hmm. Um, I like women. I to help them because I think we carry so much Mm -hmm. um, from being married um, to having kids, wanting kids um, to doing all of that. Um, There's some, and you, and you still want to be a person and you kind of lose so much of that. And it's like, how do I pick it up and carry it with me that I'm still a person Mm -hmm. um, once you have so many kids. And so I want to help women as much as I can be able to balance that. And so um, that's what I try, try, try my best to do in in through all different facets. I really try to do that really well. And I learned that through my own trauma and my own tragedy. And um, I think we go through hard things to help others. I don't think it's meant to be hidden. Um, like we don't want to talk about it. I think that talking about it helps you to see how you've grown and to see how the Lord showed up for you, which in turn can help um, someone else who may, my, uh, I was pregnant, five months pregnant with my youngest. So my boys are 19, 16 and 10. So when you say Mm -hmm. what season of life I'm in, I'm in the (laughs) teenage Uh season of life. They know so much. I don't know if you've ever met a teenager, but they are so smart. I mean, they just know so much. And um, and so I'm in the throes of that. And it, but I'm also seeing the fruit because listen, 10 years ago, because my youngest is 10, 10 years ago, you couldn't have told me that I would be here mm. now. My mm-hmm. husband at that in that season was 33. I was 36. He went into a coma. I was five months pregnant. He um, stayed in that state. I took care of him in that state for a year and nine months in our newly built home. Um, And he passed after a year and nine months of being in that way. And so when I look at my little guy, uh, he's a mark for me. Like that was a mark in time. Yeah. And I, I'm always grateful, always grateful. Wow. That is incredible. I didn't know that part of your story, Rita, and I am grateful that you um, have shared it with us. I, it's, it feels really important to acknowledge, um, you know, what you said about the many things that we balance and so much of what we're balancing just in our roles um, is also incorporating grief you know, that we are, you know, that we're, we're not just, you know, one of the things that I wish that I could take, um, kids aside and say is that your mom has her very own story, you know? And then one of the things that I wish I could take kids aside or moms aside and say is that, um, your child is, is desperate for your approval. And I feel like that if we could kind of teach each other these two things simultaneously, that all our kids really want is our presence and approval. Um, and that if our kids knew that we're doing our very best, but we're carrying so much of our own story while we're trying to develop you into this wonderful human, that it would just create, um, I don't know, a lot of grace, just a lot of grace for, all of us doing our, the very best that we can. Um, thank you so much for being here and your willingness to go deep places. Let's, um, let, let's dive in. So Retha, as, um, a coach, I know that you have, you must hold so many ideals of what a, a successful or faithful person does. If you could change something about yourself, Retha, what would that be? Mm, well, okay. I'm going to go first thought, right? So first thought is something that I'm working on anyway, Mm -hmm. but it's really hard uh, (laughs) because I've been this way forever. But, um, if I could change one thing about myself, I would be, um, not so reactive. I am Mm -hmm. very like, oh, that happened. Okay. Here's what we do. Yeah. Right. I'm very much that. And Mm -hmm. 
as you'll learn listening to this podcast, and then if you just get to know me a little bit, I hear from God a lot. And he talks to me the way that I talk to you. So Mm -hmm. that's what I believe. And so right now what he's saying is, okay, when you do that, that leaves no room for me. Right. So you've spent too much time doing that. So here's your warning, girl, get it together. So Mm -hmm. I want to stop doing that. What are the, what are the tools to do that? Like, what are some practices, healthy practices? So pause is a big Mm -hmm. one. Yeah. Right. Pause is a big one. Um, But the right words, they just come so quick. I know. (laughs) I think I know what you should do. It's something to tell you. You know, it just, it does. It comes so quick. And so pausing is huge in um, when you are a reactive person. Um, And then listening, active listening Mm -hmm. um, is really good because you listen, but did you hear? Yeah, that's good. Like a clarifying question. Even if it's just like, what, what did you, what do you mean by that? Or tell me more. Like it allows more time besides just fight or flight. Like we have more options than just fight or flight. That's really good. Yeah. Yeah. So even just waiting and asking a question, that's really, really good. Okay. Yeah. I ask questions a lot. Listen, this is so interesting that I'm walking through this in my head is that (laughs) um, when God wants you to work on something, he begins to prep you way before you even know that he's going to want you to work on this thing. Yeah. So I love questions. I can come up with questions really good. And I always say in coaching and live teachings, if you ask better questions, you get better results for what mm. you're truly looking for. Mm-hmm. And so asking questions really help good. you to pause. Mm-hmm. Um, and being active, being an active listener means that you will listen better because they're answering the question that you just asked. So right. slow down. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I love that. That's really good. Um, so you are, you're ambitious, like you have goals. Um, and I know that you are, you're efficient. You have a great personality that helps you just dive right in and ask for the things you want, um, create great relationships that help you, um, achieve. And I'm just wondering, like, as you set goals for yourself or as you respond to these holy tugs to do what God is calling you to do, what are the things that keep you working hard? Like what, what motivates you? You're such a motivator that I, I feel like um, whatever it is that motivates you is probably pretty tangible. Yeah. I, what motivates me is like my why, right? So mm-hmm. my why is not my kids. I know mm-hmm. people love to say yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. are not my why. Yeah. I love them, but they're not my why. Yeah. Um, my wife, not my husband. I know people love to say that too. Mm-hmm. It's not true. I mean, not for me. And I teach people that that it can't be your why. Mm-hmm. Um, and the reason that can't be your why is because they're too close. You're going to help them anyway. I mean, you're just, yeah. you're going to help your kids anyway. <laughs> like, oh my gosh. Yes. You're going to do it anyway. So they can't be your why because there will be a time that you don't like them. You love them, but you don't like them. Mm. And you love them, but you, don't want to get out of bed for them because I mean, there's tomorrow and blah, blah, blah. So that's why they can't be your why. So my why is, and I don't want women to walk that hard road that I did. And so I want to help them cover as many holes as I can teach them, show them how to grow. And so that's my why. Mm. And so my motivation is, oh, I haven't done that enough. Mm. I I haven't done that enough. I just met you. So clearly I haven't done that enough. I don't know enough women. And I am also motivated because you go, women are still lonely. Women are still going through hard things. Women still feel left out. Women Mm. still feel underserved. Mm. They So that's, that motivates me to continue to go because Women aren't, and and listen, I'm not putting it all on my back. There are women like you. There are women, there are so many women that are champions for other women. And 
I haven't met all the champions, just like I haven't met all the women to serve. Right. So there's still room to go out there and God is still working in me and I'm not, he's not finished with me either. Right. Right. So all of that is my motivation because there's still so much for me to learn. Like me saying to you, I need to be less reactive. Mm -hmm. Um, That's a professional thing, not a personal thing, because I'm, I'm, that's where I'm looking for that growth, but there are personal things that I still need to grow in. And so that motivates me because I'm not there either. Yeah. I would love that. I feel like, um, I've always heard that, uh, one of the best places to be is if you are being mentored and if you are mentoring, because being mentored puts you in a place of humility and then be, and then mentoring requires that you really stay sharp, you know, that you really are are practicing the, the things that you preach. The other thing that I was thinking as you were talking, um, Is So we're recording this in the season of Lent and it was, I was thinking about Ash Wednesday when you were talking, because it's like this thing that we think is taboo of we're going to die one day, you know, it's like, it's not exactly, um, dinner conversation or, you know, and, um, and then there's some, the Ash Wednesday, like there it is front and center, like right on our foreheads. If you're, you know, part of a church that practices ashes and, um, but it's like, remember your death. Right. And so what that the last several years, what that has meant to me is not necessarily this morbid thing, but instead it's a call to be fully present of asking the question, why do you have me here? And I feel like your life, you, you and your mission, you have answered that question so clearly for yourself. Why am I here? And by the way, that doesn't mean that it can't shift and evolve or change or whatever, but like right now, you know why I am here. And then that's the motivation of, okay, so if this is why I'm here, these are the the things that I need to do. Okay. Well, if I'm not doing that, why, you know, I, I that's just, that's really, really great. Yeah. I say it's, you know, plan for me. I'll say it now, but anytime I speak on a podcast or on a stage, I say this at the end, if you get nothing else from me, get this, mm-hmm. this is the only life you get. You're not in a yeah. dress rehearsal for right, right, right. something else. Yes. And so, so many people um, will say, um, I've even taught a class called discovering your why or finding your passion and all of that. And those now, listen, they not gonna like that. I say this, y'all just bear with me. Listen, the reason that that's hard for you to do is because you're not channeling your life as a whole, like loving it to the fullest. A lot of people don't like their life. Yes. They're not excited about the life they're actually living. They're not fully present. Yes. They're not. And so while you are searching for your passion and want to find your why and believing that your why is them kids, that is the problem is because you, you in the mirror, stand in the mirror. I did this thing once. This is going to sound so bizarre, but it's really not. I did this thing once in my community where I said, okay, I want you to stand in the mirror completely naked for 90 seconds. Mm, Like put mm, a timer. mm -hmm, mm -hmm. That is you looking at yourself yeah, and being good to yourself. Yes. That's so hard for women to do because we go to our hair is this way, or we have this that here, or we have this and that there. But the goal of that is to get better with looking at you. Because let me, and if you don't like you, I can't like you. That's right. You right. don't even bring the fullness of to, to yourself, to me, to like you. Ugh. You're wanting me to like the 20% that you like, but that yeah. may not come to me. What if I could like the 80% that you don't like? What if I like that? That may work <sighs> for me. Ugh. I love you so much. That's so good. And I love it that you took it to this physical space because I feel like we have such complicated relationships with our own bodies and what we think they're supposed to look like. And that lack of embodiment is holding us back from this whole person um, sense of, of love. I'm so grateful that you said that. Yeah. Yeah. We would be much further along in our purpose or our why or loving, loving our life. If we loved ourselves first. Yeah. Even the actual body that we actually have. Oh, so grateful. Okay. Those were, those were just two questions and they got real deep. Let's do (laughs) it. Let's do an easy one really quick. Um, how would your friends describe you, Retha? 
Oh, um, I think they would say that I'm a girlfriend's girl, mm-hmm. but you probably would say that like yes. just for a time of knowing me. I love mm-hmm. good conversation. I mm-hmm. love, you know, shopping. I love to talk to you about a fiction romance book that's so <laughs> cheesy that I'm reading. I love a good rom-com. I don't know what is going on in Hollywood that they aren't making them anymore. Oh, They're so good. Okay. Mm. So yeah, I think they would say that, that, um, that I care about the things that matter. And I point them to the things that don't and be like, why are we talking about this? Like stay in the daily bread. I think mm-hmm. they would say I'm a mm-hmm. daily bread. I say that a lot. Um, mm-hmm. Yeah. I think that's what they would say. I love cake. I love a good cake. I love a good cake. I'm going to eat it. You yeah. <laughs> Not just like sniff cake. it. <laughs> I'm going to deprive myself of the cake. I'm going to eat the cake. Okay. I'm finding us a good cake when you come to Brian. That's happening. That's on the agenda. I love cake. Okay. Who do you have a hero? Oh, my mom. Hmm. How come? Yeah. My mom's my hero because, okay. So we're, I mean, we'll just get deep again. My mom's my hero because um, I said this a minute ago, I'm 46. So I was born in 1976 and my mom was 16. So Hmm. In 1976, that was unheard of. I mean, you couldn't do that. And um, and she still was a valedictorian of her class. And um, she went on to college and she was salutatorian of her college class. Stop and, it. Um, she is the most amazing person ever. Um, my mom taught me perseverance. And I think that is something that all people need to know because life is going to happen. Right. And, um, and so how you persevere matters. Yeah. And so for that, she's my hero because that was, I learned that later. Um, Mm -hmm. My parents and my grandparents did a good job of me not knowing and understanding Mm -hmm. uh, how detrimental a teen pregnancy could be. I, Mm. I, I didn't know that. I, my mom still went to college And, um, this is, you know, how they live just an example. So my mother was going, she always wanted to be a teacher and then she got pregnant at 16 and, um, she was senior in high school. And my, uh, grandmother said, listen, you've already been accepted to college, but you cannot be a teacher because now you're a party of two. So you have to do something that makes above average money because teachers don't make enough for a party of two out the gate. And, um, and so that's, that's how my, that's how my family, you know, wow. that's what they believe is that we're not going to blame you, but now you got to do what it takes to be different. You got to yeah. do what it takes to be better than what you believe because, um, you have a situation. Yeah. Wow. So it doesn't that's make incredible. it bad. Doesn't make it good. We just got to keep going. And yeah. so. She did that and she made no excuses. And because of that, uh, she did not allow me to make any excuses. So when people yeah. look at me and they say, okay, so your husband went into a coma, you were five months pregnant and you took care of him at home in that state and you opened a bakery in the middle of that, like, yeah, yeah. because that's the situation. Mm-hmm. So we could lay down, but eventually we got to get up. So let's just not even lay down. Right. Like that's how I operate is like laying down looks so good. Listen, that would be so fun. However, it's not going to help and we're going to have to get up. So I'm already up. Right. So like if you're listening to this and you're in a hard season and you want to crawl mm-hmm. under a rock or you mm-hmm. are just like wanting to hide, you're already up. So just walk slow. Crawl yeah. if you have to, but I don't lay that. down. Oh, I because love that. It's much harder to yeah. get up when you're laying down. And take your time if you need to, but oh, crawl. Oh, oh so gosh, slow. that's beautiful. Thank you. Yeah. yeah it's so really my good. mother, that's why my mother is. Yeah. If you could, given all of your, you know, preferences, um, quirks, maybe even if you could design the perfect day, what would your perfect day include? Well, 
Um, okay, so I'm a mom of three. It would not include these children. I'm just gonna, <laughs> I'm just gonna be real with y'all. I'm in the throes of teenage world. Yeah, it, it just wouldn't involve them. My yeah, mine would have a hotel for sure. A yeah. big white bed, like by myself. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Go ahead. Sorry. So yeah, I want to. Um, my body is naturally up, so I just want it to mm. naturally wake up. Like I don't yes. want an alarm to go off at five. No. No, the birds or yeah. something. Yes, God can do it. Yeah. Yes. So I'd like to naturally wake up. Um, I love a good breakfast. So I, I love breakfast. So I would love mm-hmm. a good mm-hmm. breakfast. Mm-hmm. Um, and then a massage, a nice pedicure. Mm-hmm. And then um, I'd probably like to work for just two hours. So maybe see oh. two people. Yeah. Um, and then go and meet a girlfriend for yeah. lunch uh-huh. and um, like, let's walk around. There's not many, I don't like a big mall, but like an outdoor mall. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Do some of that. I think. What, what stores, great, what's, what stores are in your outdoor mall? So I think great conversation happens. Like as you're going in Mac and I love a good lipstick. If you know anything about me, I okay. Love I was gonna suggest a Sephora. Maybe we could. Oh, sorry, yeah. I just made myself your lunch date. No, um, but I but think maybe that's we, great. Can we go into a Sephora? Yeah, I think okay. we could go into a Sephora, okay. and then let's just at here where I live. There's a Trader Joe's right next to Sephora, so then let's okay. just go in there and think of some new stuff that we could try. Yeah, some cheeses just like we just did in Sephora. Like, oh, this is probably yeah. a good eye thing mm-hmm. to try. Something like mm-hmm. that. Mm-hmm. Or let's just try something new over there. And then, and then I, I do like the mister. So then I could go and to dinner with him uh-huh. and, um, and then go to bed. Sounds, I, I feel like you should maybe work in a romantic comedy with your mister. <laughs> yeah. 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 Okay. Perfect. That's great. I love that day. That's great. I really love that you incorporated your work. I feel like that's such a lovely sign of, um, doing what you love and loving what you do. How wonderful. I do. I love what I do. I really do. And even on the tough days, like if I have uh, clients that are in crisis and so it's hard, I still love it because um, I pray a lot for my people, um, my clients. And so I'm always like, come on, Holy Spirit, Mm -hmm. come on in here. Mm -hmm. What you got for them today? Yeah. 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 Okay. What, um, what makes you angry, Rita? Okay, first response. Yes. Um, being mean for no reason. Mm-hmm. Mean so, people, yeah. Yeah, I think that everybody has a default. Mm-hmm. And your default has to do with your foundation and your past hurts and your past rainbow moments as well. Mm-hmm. And I want you to heal from that because... <laughs> We can't keep being mean for no reason or mean yeah. it's your default. And and by mean, I just mean like, you know that that's not nice, but your excuse is, it's just how I am. No, but you don't have to be that way anymore. Right. You're making a choice. That statement makes you know that you're making a choice. Mm-hmm. So first reaction to that is mean people, because I don't think you have to be. Again, it goes back to this is the only life you get. That reminds me of the person that's like, what? I'm just really honest. And it's like, okay, if you enjoy being mean through your honesty, then there's probably a red flag there, something that you should spend a little time working on. Like that was just fun for you, you know, hurting someone's feelings. Um, And I do, I feel like people use their, whether it's their personality um, test or whether it's their place on the astrological calendar, whatever, you know, they use these things as an excuse to, um, follow their rude impulses. Yeah. yeah that's I think why that I call happens it the default, lot. right? Because yeah. uh, I think I, I'll be transparent and say like in my younger years, pre-healing, pre like mm-hmm. really being in relationship with Jesus. Oh, I could cut you with my tongue. Like, sure. I yeah. Could go after you. And so if you coach with me or if you know me, I'm a truth teller too. I'm going to make you look in the mirror. I'm going to say mm-hmm. the hard things, but no one will call me mean. Right. Because without love, it's the gong, you know, it's, it's the symbol. You're just the yeah, symbol. <laughs> I practice 
how to say it so yeah. that it would be effective. Mm-hmm. But it doesn't I, have to be mean. It doesn't. And have I to be genuinely rude. love you. I care about your growth, and we're in relationship. And through that genuinely. relationship, yeah. And th- so there's there's proximity to honesty. It's like you can correct me to the level that you love me, you know, yeah. <laughs> or to the level that we're, that we're in relationship with one another. I feel like we're always trying to kind of be the Holy Spirit for one another, and without relationship and calling out people's wrongs and hating other people's sin more than you do your own. It's just it's it's the clanging symbol. I have another easy question. What is something that makes you laugh the most? Um, okay, right now, I when I really want to laugh, I will go on TikTok. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Funny yeah. videos are really like my jam right now. And I, I love them for two reasons. One, also because my teenagers send them to me. Of course, yes. And so I feel like that's a way for us to be in relationship because yeah, it's hard when you yeah. have teenage boys. Um, but I love that. I like comedy just in general. Um, I love humor and sarcasm. I think it's funny, but yeah. I really, I felt that way about TikTok. So we started our TikTok channel during um, pandemic and COVID just as a way to stay friendly with one another. It's like, let's just make some videos. I mean, we're here, might as well. And so um, what I loved about it and what I didn't realize I was getting myself into is that if Facebook is a place for your... um, lengthy opinion and and Twitter is a place for your hot take and Instagram is a place for beauty. TikTok was a place for your humor. Yeah. And I what it was these people were gathering um through laughter. It was like we were coping through laughter and it was such a reprieve. I was so grateful for that space. And then you realize how stinking funny people are. Like even if people are not making videos, look at the comment sections. People oh, are hilarious. Hila- race to the comments. If you find yes. a video that is funny, race to the comments because the comments will crack you up even more. Totally. So, yeah. I do a thing on the first Saturday of the month called Seek Joy Saturday. And so I want you to seek the joy. And to me, there's joy in TikTok. If you, yeah, yeah. it's so funny. It is yeah. so funny. So what's your algorithm? Like, or what are you laughing at? Are you laughing at animal videos? Or are you laughing at people falling? Like, what's your, because <laughs> I feel like my algorithm um, knows me better than I know myself. Yes. People falling is um, in my <laughs> algorithm. Um, people doing, um, imitations is uh-huh. funny. Listen, this is going to sound so horrible. I hope it doesn't. And you can cut it if it sounds bad, but women dancing mm-hmm. that are like in there, like I found, I don't know why they're in my TikTok, but men that are like in their eighties and nineties and women in their eighties and nineties dancing, it brings me so much joy mm-hmm. because I am like, what would you be doing if you did not have TikTok? You have got to be loving life now. Like I, it brings me joy because it brings them so much joy. Like yes. I'm not at all making fun of them. I just, so are you saying bad dancing? That's what I hear you saying. Oh my gosh. It is bad dancing. <laughs> it is so funny, but I love it. Not in a bad way. I love it because I'm like, yes. you, this has got to be bringing you so much life. And then yeah. I look and you have hundreds of thousands of followers. And I'm like, and everybody is in the comments like, yes, you got yes. it. And I'm like, oh, it's so fun. Anyway. See, that was the other thing too. I feel like people like you and me that are kind of natural encouragers or cheerleaders. The reason, another reason we love TikTok is because everyone has become each other's hype people. Oh yes. You know, like we're like, yeah. yes, you do that. If you could make this um, shallow, that'd be great. If you want to make it deep, it can be deep too. But if you won the lottery. What oh, is <laughs> be deep? I can tell you that right now. Okay, give me the shallow. <laughs> <laughs> it, it would not be deep. I, I mean, you know, I could if I wanted to. But I would real and tell y'all that. Listen, if I have the lottery, oh my gosh! First of all, I am buying. I, I'm not. I these are my vices that mm-hmm. I can afford for them to be real. Yeah. Um, houses. I love houses. Oh my gosh. I uh-huh. want, I want a pantry that, that somebody really could sleep in. That's what I, I, I okay. want that in my life. Yeah. I yeah. want a closet that doesn't involve anybody else. I, mm. I, I have that. Um, yeah. So I would like a big massive house and 
I know you said, but your kids are grown. So what? It's what I want. I want to sleep on the West Wing is what I'm saying to you. Um, I want, um, I want a car and a truck. Like, listen, I do. I want a car and a truck. There's some okay. days I want to drive a little sporty car. And then there's some days I want to have an SUV. Um, I have a handbag problem as it is currently. So I would like to buy a handbag. To exacerbate that. that yeah. Through. I, yeah. you know, yeah. Oh gosh. If I won the lottery, listen, it'd be a situation. I would like to go shopping with you. You would have a great time because yeah. I would, oh my, I would buy you so much stuff. I'd like, I would win the lottery and not just be selfish. Like my friends mm-hmm. all that, that's would something benefit. about me. Like if I won the lottery, they would be like, oh, I know we're going. Sarah Blakely, who owns Spanx, uh-huh. she does this thing. And she's done it for 17 years. She has 15 friends, 14 friends. I guess they're her best friends. Mm-hmm. Every year for her birthday, mm-hmm. she takes them on a surprise trip. Oh they don't gosh. know where they're going. They're gone for a week. And she just tells them the weather, like it's going to be uh-huh. hot or it's going to be cold. Yeah. That's so that they know how to pack. And, um, and they, a limo comes and picks them up, which they, you know, she's our age. So they think it's still funny that a limo comes and picks them up and, um, and they take a private jet to wherever they're going. That's wow. me. If I win the lottery once okay. a quarter, yeah. pack it up, we're going, we're yeah. getting away from the people and we're going to have a good time. Every time I see that, her birthday just passed. So if you don't follow her on social, you can yeah, see it. Yeah, I'm about to. Like last week. We might weasel our way into her inner, inner circle. Who knows? What are we doing with our life that we're not doing? <laughs> what are we doing? And so I would love something like that. So yeah. she them, and, and they went to Puerto Rico. That's where mm-hmm. they went this time. Okay. And they were there for a week. And they look forward to it. And they love it. And it's around her birthday, so they know when to take off every year. Okay, question. Um, do you like surprises? Because that would be a surprise. I don't know. I'd kind of like to know a little where we're going, Rita. I mean, as long if listen, if the Lord's going to make us rich and if we're going to give it away, I don't know why the Lord isn't making me rich if I would give it away. Okay, but if we're going to give it away like that, <laughs> would I, I, I would like to know a destination. I would be like, Mrs. Spanx, listen, just a vicinity. If you could just give me a vicinity. Do you like surprises? I do like a surprise. You do. Okay. Yeah. I like a surprise. Like this is the he'll my husband will never hear this, but even if he does, I mean, we've already joked about it in the house. I like surprises and my husband loves giving surprises, but they aren't, they don't always match up. Like this Christmas, he gave me a shirt. I'm going to send you a picture of it. Please. So you can put it in your show notes when we get off. It has a cat. Perfect. A cat. And it says something about like patience. And he gave me that for Christmas. And I just was like, you know me, like, what am I (laughs) doing? (laughs) What am I saying to him? I have miscommunicated. (laughs) Was a good surprise. Oh, bless his heart. Yeah. Yeah. So I do. I like surprises. I think Puerto Rico's way better, mister. (laughs) Wake him up, please. Somebody help him. (laughs) <laughs> okay. Um, listen, let's do, uh, okay. So let's talk about your song at, on karaoke night. And then I want to hear where you would see yourself in, in five years. And then we'll kind of start to wrap things up and tell people where they can follow and how to support you and, and all of these things. But your song at karaoke night, what are we belting? I think this is so crazy. So I think my song at karaoke night would be mm-hmm. One of two things. I would either do salt and peppers, push it. Nice choice. Yeah. I mean, I think you got to dance. I mean, what's, yeah. what is it without some dance movements there? And that keeps you pretty active. So I would either do that or um, I have a friend, Melissa, who will probably listen to this. And we will do any SWV song, like anyone. Uh-huh. We do that. So I would probably do that. I'd probably do okay. one of those every so time. So my best friend and I, she's on every episode. My best friend and I, we were best friends in the third grade. It was right when Salt and Peppa were making you you and I are the same age almost. And Salt and Peppa was really 
coming in strong, at least in our sphere. And we hold ourselves up in her room and we learned every single word to push it. And there were dance moves involved. We put on a little concert for our parents and they were, of course, horrified. Very offended. I mean, the lyrics were something else. We were so proud of ourselves. And so we would, anyways, salt and pepper for sure. Know every single word. Um, Great stuff. Great choice. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Okay. So where do you see yourself in five years? Maybe this is a more specific way of saying, what are you, what are you hopeful for? What are you hoping for? Um, Five years. I, I always have a hard time with these questions um, because there's a part of me that's like, I'm open. Yeah. I'm open to whatever you got. God, bring it. I love that. Um, Yeah. But then there's a part of me that I think, or I know that he's like, yeah, but what do you desire? Like, yeah, tell me about you, right? Mm. That's the intimacy that I think he Mm. wants with us. And so- I love that answer. I love the tension in that. Yeah. Yeah. So I Mm -hmm. I have that going on. So I think I'm open, right? But then as well, I would, um, I probably- Gosh, I'm so lame. I I'd still love to be coaching. I yeah. um maybe I have more products um like uh workbooks and devotionals mm-hmm. that yeah. can really help people more. Um but yeah, I'd still probably want to be doing what I'm doing. Yeah. I think it's effective, right? So that's really mm-hmm. really wise because I think it's I, I think it's effective and and I don't say that um, without context. That's hard to hear. It sounds really arrogant, but the context that I'll mm-hmm. give you for that is it's not me. I mean, God shows up in my business every day Amen. and I'm honored um, that he allows me to walk that journey with people. And so yeah. I give it all to him. If you don't know me, then that may sound fake, but if you do know me, or if you get to know me, you'll see that, yeah, that's real what she's mm-hmm. saying, because I mean that I, yeah. I close up shop today. If he said, Hey, you're no longer, this is no longer effective. Let's move on. I'd move on. Mm-hmm. Um, and again, that comes from the 10 years ago being, mm-hmm. you know, he just sat me down and was like, Hey, that's, this isn't, what are you doing? This mm-hmm. isn't a good life you're living. Mm-hmm. And so you got to change. And, and so I did. Yeah. I love, um, I was just talking with a friend recently, um, about ministering out of the places we've been ourselves, yeah. you know? And so, um, I feel like there's often a perceived lack of love if we're trying to teach and instruct out of a place that we've never been, um, you know, giving directions to places you've never been. And so, um, you having been through so much and having walked through so much, having, um, achieved so much, even from, you know, these beginnings of, of watching your mom be a total warrior. Um, I'm just really, really grateful for the things that you've seen and done and overcome. And I can, say to every listener, Rita is the absolute real deal. I've been um, following for for several months now and just highly, highly encourage you to dive into the things that she's offering. How can we promote you and support you? Um, What are you offering to people um, besides maybe just being like um, a formal client, which, hey, let's do that too. But I feel like you're offering some programs online, some ways to jump in um, with... um, Like, aren't you in the middle of a discipleship program right now? Yeah. So yeah. Tell us the things. um, Instagram is my favorite. So if you follow me on Instagram, if you like Instagram, you'll, you'll like me on there. Um, It's my favorite. I'm on there every day with some type of word for people or something to do to help you be better. Um, And through there, you'll see that I have a community of women um, that, we meet on a, another platform called circle. It's a, it's a yes. platform for communities. Mm-hmm. And so um, that platform is uh, where my community is. It's $7 a month, but I'm in there every day. We do a podcast in there every week. 
Uh, that's where the class is going on. Five weeks to a better you is what's mm. happening right now. We just did week two yesterday, mm-hmm. which was healthier you. Um, and we have other workshops coming up. Um, I coach women in there um, because the thing about what I do is coaching with me one-on-one. I know that that's a luxury. That's a luxury item. It's, it it's, it's, I don't think it's expensive as most people, but it costs a good amount of money. I'm not sure. going to lie, right? Yeah, it's an investment. So when I say I want to help other women, I, that's what I mean. Like, come and be a part of my community. You still get me. You can, um, there's a ton of women in there and it's about being in that community and learning and growing. Um, and in addition to that, I choose, I ask for volunteers every month if you want a one hour coaching come and get it. I'm here. Mm -hmm. And, um, and they can get with me on zoom and I walk them through an hour. Then I also offer, if you are just stuck somewhere or you can't figure it out, or you're walking through a transition or change, or you're in a crisis and you Mm -hmm. don't need coaching with me regularly, because that is Mm -hmm. six months, you can get one hour. And so I offer that as well. So I really do mean what I say, right. When I try to um, help people where they are right now. So right. coach with me for six months. It's a one-on-one program, life or business or both. Mm-hmm. Um, and then um, my community is $7 a month. We have a podcast in there. We have monthly coaching. We have workshops every quarter because um, it depends on how long they last. We always do a challenge. We just finished a 30 day journal challenge, which was, I put a prompt in every mm. day it would mm. come out at like 4 a.m. That. And that everything I do, I like my whole goal. I always ask myself is, is this going to help them get on track to creating a life that they love? Yeah. yeah. Cause that's the goal Yeah, for me. That's my ultimate yeah. goal. And setting aside time and space as a woman and just the way that we started to bring it around full circle is all the things that you are are juggling, you know, to really take um, concentrated time, intentional yeah. time for yourself to nurture the woman that God is calling you to be. Thank you. Um, thank you so much for providing that space for us. Um, yeah. What is, what's your handle on Instagram and what's the name of the podcast? Um, so the handle is Retha Nicole and Nicole is with an H N I C H O L E. And the podcast is, um, it's in the community, but it's walk me through that. Cause I say that a lot. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. I always I say that. to moms of teens, yeah. the best thing you could say <laughs> instead of going, Oh, that was dumb. Or why'd you do that is, huh? So walk me through that. That's what yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I say that all the time. Yeah. Oh, I love it. Yeah. Well, thank you so much. This has been so much fun. This is a delightful That's conversation. So and I knew exactly what was going to happen. I knew that we were going to touch on about five topics where I was like, <laughs> I need another hour of that. So please, I hope that you come back. I'm so grateful for the relationship that we've started. I pray Obviously. it continues and that God crosses our paths again and again. I know you're coming to Brian. Please come stay in my garage apartment. Friends, community, Center Saints, sisters, go follow Retha Nicole and dive right in. Thank you so much for being here. Hello, Beefinator. Hey, hey, hey. How are you today? How delightful was Retha? Ah, so good. So good. She's um, just really, really relatable. But I always, I mean, I, I, when you interview people like that, it's, they're always relatable, right? I love how when you ask questions, oh, you the, get yeah. to, yeah, not only like, I love it when you introduce people to me that I haven't yet met that way, right? I feel like I get a really good understanding of them. And then it's also fun to think about how I might answer the questions that you pose. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it was, it was a great interview. I love it too, because I can know someone and still, um, yeah. learn something different about, you know, this, this friend, this new friend, this old friend, whatever. I mean, I could do 20 questions with you and still be surprised by something, for sure. you know? For sure. um, yeah, yeah. So now that we're in summertime, just speaking of, okay. um, where you're like, it's summer. It is like, we are full fledged summer. It's here. So I was curious, Beef, what are two things that you love about summer and two things that you do not love about summer? Okay, are you going to answer them too? Yeah, do you need me to go first? Do you have a minute to think? Uh, sure. Okay, well, I haven't, 
haven't yeah. thought about it either, but I think I only have one of each. Anyway, um, I can tell you, oh, no, I have two hates. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to start with my hates. So okay. um, one of them is that we live on the surface of the sun. Oh it's God. just hot. It's so hot. Why? Why is it so hot? It doesn't have to be this way. Why do we live here, Beef? I, it is so hot. Okay, and so, go ahead. Well, I'm, I'm about to be crass. So if you're like listening with your toddler, like turn it down. Okay. So there's this meme that went around a couple of years ago and I can't step outside without thinking of it. And the meme is, it's a lady and she's sitting there and she, she's sweating. She's got her hands in her head. She was like, so hot out here. I'm about to put these titties in a ponytail. Wow. <laughs> wow. Wow. I can't step outside without oh thinking. <laughs> well, okay. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry for all of Don't be sorry. Don't be my sorry. really gave- proper listeners. I have some proper listeners and I'm really sorry, but now you're going to think of it too. You just gave so, us all words that we needed. Yeah. Um, okay. I can tell you my hates because it's a, obviously, and that has to be mine too. Not only is it hot, but we are under a quote, excessive heat advisory, which, right. you know, we haven't been under since 2016. So it's like, well, it's thank hot you for that Houston. information. We're only so hot, but this is like next level crazy town hot okay. where like Mike and I are like reviewing, like how to be responsible citizens in this level of heat. Right. And we're supposed yeah. to like do certain things with our air condition. We're not supposed to like do the dishes or wash clothes at certain times of the day. We're supposed to be rotating our fans counterclockwise instead of clockwise. Did you know? Oh, wow. This is like another episode, but I also can't tell when I look at a fan, which way it's rotating. It's an optical illusion thing for me. Just look and see if you can know. I can't, I'm looking I, at one right now and I just got confused. No, yeah, I got it. It is oh, literally no. like, Once you see it, you can't unsee it. It's a whole thing. Okay. Please try it. Um, Okay. And so it's too hot to do anything. It's too hot to breathe. Like I ran into somebody this morning when I was taking our daughter to a camp and she was like sweating, like, cause she had like exercised. And I was like, what have you, you've already done that. Cause it was early. And she's like, well, yeah, I have to do it before it gets hot. And I'm like, no, you you can't, you you have to do it in (laughs) May if you're going to do it before it's hot. Um, okay. So I thought you were going to say, I thought you were going to say, so she was sweating. And so I was like, oh, you've already worked out. And she's like, no, I oh walked God. to the car. I <laughs> truthfully like started thinking whether I should be eating my words as they were coming. Yeah. Out that <laughs> um, okay. And so then the excessive heat gives number two uh, to me, which is my unfortunate appearance in the summer, because um, like yesterday, Hope said to me, my 10 year old daughter late in the day, what's wrong with your makeup? And I had like some sort of like gloppage of like the sweat and the foundation yeah. and done something inappropriate in the middle of my head. I think maybe yeah. sunglasses hmm. that no one had told me about the whole yeah. day. So yeah. like things just don't stay where they're supposed to. Things are dripping yeah. in all parts of the body. So right. I... You know, we have to dress for this nonsense, right? Mm -hmm. Well, I listen, and I don't, y'all don't need to be like too nice to me or anything. It's fine. Like, I I like my body. I have a healthy body. I'm, I love, it's fine. Okay. It's fine. But I just don't, well, I just don't love my thighs. I just don't. Okay. So I'm not a big shorts wearer. I don't like shorts. I don't feel like I look cute in shorts. Do you want to know how difficult it is to, survive on the surface of the sun without a pair of shorts. Okay. So like I'm having to just dress really creatively. I brought up the idea that if I could get over like that, my strengths lie elsewhere and I don't like my thighs, like big deal, who cares? I thought that if we could just, I talked with Taylor about this and he was appalled, but if we could just go to nude beaches, like on the regular. Yeah. Okay. Well, okay. So you and Taylor have some things to talk about, but I I just thought, if, if we all went to a nude beach once a month, we would be subject to so many other body types, oh, like such a okay. wide variety of body types. Okay. I would not care that like, for some reason, God gave me like fat knees. I wouldn't okay. care. It'd be like big deal. It's hot. And I'm going to wear my shorts okay, and my you thighs. Know what Rita would tell you. What would Rita tell me? You need to get yourself in front of the mirror naked for 90 seconds. Oh, yes. I forgot that part. You don't need to go to the nude beach. (laughs) Stand by yourself in front of the mirror. (laughs) 
Okay. Oh um, the other thing that yeah. I hate about summer is that is the food, the snacks. Like the kids are just oh. around all the time. And of, are they hungry? Like after I make a meal? Of course not. Don't be silly. And so then I'm like, well... I'm not doing anything else. And so then they're like, it's cool, mom. We'll help ourselves. I'm like, yeah, like a bear cub. You will yeah. help yourself by ripping into the bread like a honey badger instead of untwisting the thing and opening it like a normal person. This is where efficiency is not appreciated, children. No. So no. it's just the food. I it, That's a struggle for me. So much food. Yeah. Um, okay. Let's be positive. Okay. Um, okay. My positives things I like about summer are, um, I feel like the days are longer. Um, I mean, they are like, as far as the sun being up, but so mm-hmm. my one child in particular is, um, not good tired. So like, I'm pretty serious. About <laughs> I know tomorrow. which one. <laughs> <laughs> um, and so I love that we can sleep in in the morning so we can stay up later and just have yes. more time together because totally. I'm not scared of what might happen at the uh, <laughs> alarm clock for school. Um, and then this is like on me cause I could do this at, in not summer, but, um, I find that in summer, like my parenting is focused a lot more on, um, school and academics and in summer I'm focused more on friends and relationships, right. Just cause there's mm. not the other to pay attention to. So yeah. I've just been like, obviously around my kids, friends more, um, but just thinking more about their relationships as we're like filling our days, it's more with like people rather than like school. Right. And so, um, that's fun for me to think yeah. about it. Get to know some other people even better. Yeah. I love that too. So mine, mine's the same. Um, a schedule makes me rebel. So like, yeah. I feel really controlled by a schedule. I hate a schedule. And a lot of it is like dysfunctional, you know, like I've joked about this before. I mean, I'm I'm kind of joking, but not really, where someone's like, hey, do you want to have a phone date? And I'm like, yes, I do. And they're like, what day's good? And I'm like, Thursday looks pretty great. And they're like, okay, what time? And I'm like, never mind. Like, yeah, I just yeah. like yeah. I, I, mm. so the schedule, like the hectic pace of school right. is a, like a violation to my system. Right. And so yeah. I really appreciate how summer is so fluid. Like, Hey, do y'all want to do this? And the ones that do let's get in the car, you know, yeah. or, Hey, I'm in your neck of the woods. Could you grab a a salad or a drink? Yeah. You know? Yeah. So I, th- that just, I thrive on spontaneity, which is interesting. Mm-hmm. Cause not surprise. I like spontaneity, but not surprise. Yeah. Interesting. So, yeah. um, yeah, I really like that. And I do, I just feel like things are way more, my kids are more relaxed. And so they're more pleasant. Like they they don't feel the pressures of everything that they're up against, whether it's their uh-huh. sports schedules and their tests and, you know, all the things that they carry too. It's just, it's such a great time. I wish it were longer. It goes so fast now that we're old. So fast. Yeah. yeah. All right. Well, we need um, some beefy summer dates. I hope to see you soon. I'm envisioning a lake. I feel like we need to be on a boat. And I'd also like you to be wearing shorts. <laughs> That's rude. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I will tell you, I will tell you when your makeup's in a glop. Okay. Thank you. Thank it's, what, you. it's what beefies do. All right. Love you. Love you. Bye. I am so, so grateful for you listener. If you liked this episode, could you please do me a favor and hit subscribe and leave a review? It really helps the show grow and I would be so appreciative. Thank you so much to our guests who share their gifts so generously with us. And a special thank you to Taylor Schroll, who does so much behind the scenes to make the show great. If it weren't for him, I would still be in my closet with my iPhone. You can follow along at Forte Catholic as well. That's Taylor's show where I show up now and again. And to keep up more regularly, please follow along on Instagram, at Allison M. Sully or TikTok at Sullivan Family TikTok. See you next week. Today's show was a production of Allison Sullivan in conjunction with the Forte Catholic Podcast Network. For more great Catholic podcasts, head on over to ForteCatholic.com slash podcasts or wherever you listen to podcasts.